Hey, well, good morning, everybody. My name is Jennifer Scheich, and I'm the editor of Farm Journal's Pork. And I have the pleasure of serving on the LPC Board of Directors and um, I'm really grateful to be able to be a part of helping organize LPC's Coffee and Collaboration, which is basically our attempt to just kind of bring this big group together um, on a more regular basis throughout the year so we don't have to wait to Ag Media Summit to see each other. And um, we really enjoy being able to explore kind of different topics each month that relate to what we do in ag communications and journalism, uh, recognizing that we all play different roles and that the role of an ag communicator is quite varied. Um, there are a lot of things that, you know, when it comes down to it are some of the same things that we face. And this is a topic that I feel like, you know what, it doesn't really matter what role that you play. Um, this is a topic that, you know, everybody can relate to and should relate to. And so today we're gonna be talking about mentoring and how it's a two-way street. And so um, I'm really excited to introduce that group and talk about that a little bit more. But first, I want to just remind everybody, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Basically, it's a really simple format to where we're going to um, have our speakers talk for a while, and then we'll open up to questions at the end. But if you think of a question as you go, please feel free to uh, go down to the bottom where the chat button is and, and throw your questions in there. We'd love to see your questions, and we'll get to those at the end. Um, but want to make sure everybody knows that that's a place that you can also share a few ideas or thoughts or, or weigh in on a topic yourself, because this really is a conversation that we want everybody to be involved in to some degree. And so we're giving our speakers their time, but feel free to throw your two cents in in the chat area as well. Um, before we get started and before I introduce them, I do want to introduce you to Stacy Fox. She is our executive director of LPC, and I just want to throw it over to her to see if she has any announcements, because I know there's a lot of great things going on. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, thanks for, for organizing another great topic today. I'm excited to to hear it. A couple of big things. Um, Ag Media Summit registration is open. Um, so if you're planning to join us in Kansas City in August and want the best rates and um, hotel uh, options and everything, go ahead and head over to Ag Media Summit um, website and get your registration done. Contest entries are open as well. So the uh, early early uh, contest deadline is April 12th. Prices will go up after that. So get your contest entries in early. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to, to answer any questions on that. And then we did implement a new membership system, which will give us access to a directory. So appreciate everybody who's gone in and um, updated their memberships and, um, you know, uh, we're working out the kinks as any new membership system um, comes along. So, but we're really happy with how that's going. So you have access to go in and update your own membership information and, and view the directory and everything. And so uh, if you have questions about that, just feel free to reach out. And again, if there's anything that you need or ideas that you have, we are always here and uh, willing to, to listen and um, there are opportunities to serve on community uh, on committees as well. If you want to get involved, more involved in LPC, um, be I'll drop my email in the uh, chat and just let me know if there's anything you have questions about. And um, that's all that I have. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Stacey. And I have to say it was so easy. That was the easiest uh, registration that I've had for any organization. So if I did it wrong, I apologize. No. <laughs> it was very easy. So um <laughs> Thank you for thank you for making that a better process for us here. Um, so I'm thrilled to be able to introduce you to um, a person who's very near and dear to my heart, who has been a mentor to me. And so when I thought about mentorship and how important mentoring is, I thought, well, I guess I'll go to one of my mentors and see if she can kind of share some of her um, secrets to how she's been such a good mentor to so many people in our industry for such a long time. And I'm really not saying that to fluff her up. I, I say that in all sincerity. I, I, as I look and think about all the people that Angie Denton has mentored over the years, the list is long and uh, super impressive. And I don't think, you know, I can only hope to be able to be a mentor like her someday because without her, I would not be where I am today. And so um, I'm not part of it. Exactly. I'm going to moderate today and throw a few questions out but you may hear a little bit of my two cents because she asked me to share a few thoughts here or there. But um, I'm kind of like your old one. That's funny. I'm like the old grandma of your <laughs> protégés. 
it's kind of sad. Anyway, so Angie Dutton from Kansas State University, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves, but she is joined by two of her, for lack of a better word, protégés or, or people that she's invested into, but also have invested into her. Because again, a big part of what we're talking about today is this being a two-way street. And she'll be the first person to tell you that she is a better person because of these two young women. But we have Emily Grund, who also is at Kansas State University, and Lauren Gatz at Kansas State University. Lauren is still a student. Um, Emily is in a full-time uh, career um, there at K-State as well with her mentor, Angie. But they have such a cool story, and I'm really excited to turn it over to them uh, today. And again, thank you guys for joining us. And please don't hesitate to throw your questions in as we go in the chat. Well, hi, everybody. I like being on the other side of this, not being the speaker. So, but, uh, and if there's anything that makes you feel old is when you are get to be the mentor and you have all these protégés under you, which, which I agree. I, I am also the protégé um, in all these mentoring opportunities that I've had. But just to kind of, for those of you that don't know me, um, I uh, will tell you a little bit about myself. These are kind of some pictures to capture my life. Um, that first one on the top left, that is my life. If there's anything that I'm most proud of is being a mom um, and being a Hereford show mom. Um, that's my family. This last summer at the Junior National Hereford Expo, uh, my son, um, Wes, ended his show career this past year, and we were lucky enough to have the reserve grand bread known steer. And so that, that, real, that if there's any picture that captures my life, it's that right there and those people in that picture. Um, some other pictures on here uh, to kind of start with my story. I um, grew up in Blue Rapids, which is 45 miles north of here um, on a Hereford operation, chose to go to Kansas State and major in ag journalism and, um, and dual major in animal science as well, to be real honest with you when I started. Um, I had, um, I've always believed in finding mentors to help me, um, I guess, get, you know, it's kind of, um, to help you get you where you need to go, I believe in mentorships and who you know and the networking. And I've been so blessed the years to have so many great mentors. Um, starting first, um, you know, as a junior Hereford member, as an FFA member, and then here at Kansas State, uh, Dr. Erpeldean, um, um, Ed Bible, who was editor of the Hereford World while I was a youth. Um, and then um, during my internship um, at the Angus Journal, Gerilyn Johnson Houghton um, made an immense um, change in my life and it helped make me who I am today. And then while I was at Angus, um, Shauna, the picture, the second picture on the right going down, that's Gerilyn and Shauna and I. Um, but I, I came to Kansas State, I interned at Angus. Um, then I had the great opportunity uh, to go work at Angus right out of college. Um, I was there um, first working under Gerilyn and then Shauna came. Um, and then I had the chance to move from the magazine to web marketing department. Um, and I was there um, right at 14 years at, at Angus. And then um, out of the blue, got a call from, um, I'll tell you, I, I bleed two things. I bleed Hereford and I bleed K-State. And I got a call from Craig Huffines. I wasn't looking for a job. And he asked if I would be interested to switch to or to come and be the editor at Hereford World. Um, I went and visited with him. I'll be real honest with you. Um, I uh, went back and I talked to Terry, who was the exec at, at Angus um, Media at the time and asked if there would ever be a chance that I could move home. Uh, that's what Herper was offering me. I could move home and raise West at the time. I didn't have Dustin at that point um, and um, raise my kids on the farm and work remote for Herford. Um, and I asked Terry if that would ever be an option at Angus. And um, at that point, he said, no, Angus would never allow um, remote work, which is kind of ironic now. But um, anyway, I uh, took that opportunity to go work for, for Herford. Um, and worked there first as editor and then um, moved into director of communications and marketing and then ended my career there as, as the communications and marketing director. Um, and then here seven years ago, I made the transition to K-State and I'm currently the communications coordinator here in the animal science department. I first was just hired to do website, press releases, social media, and, and help kind of tell our story for the department. Um, because of my love for youth and students and mentoring that kind of transition to some teaching opportunities. And so um, I now teach um, the, the family and friends class, the ASI communications and event planning class. And then I co-teach the bull cell class with um, now Chris Molinex. And so um, 
every day when I get up, what I love about my job is the students that I get to work with, like Lauren, um, and um, they, I gain just as much knowledge from them as I hope they do for me, but they, it, it makes my job um, great every day. That bottom left picture is um, of my family and friends class this past year at the family and friends reunion. And another thing that's made a big impression in my life for the younger um, generation that's on here and you haven't had a chance to get involved in LPC. Um, I was on the LPC board for 14 years and had the chance to serve on the executive committee and president. And it was it was also an amazing opportunity. And some of those people are, are my dearest and closest friends. Um, and I wouldn't change for that for the world. So I encourage all of you to get involved make your people, they're my people, the, that group is my people. And um, I um, I really encourage you to, to start in the committee level, work up to the board, and you won't regret the time and effort that it, it puts into to being on the LPC because it was, it was a life-changing experience. So I'll let um, Emily talk now and kind of tell you her story. Awesome, well, thank you. Um, I'm Emily Grund. Um, I tried to look for some pictures of K-State time, but apparently I didn't like being behind the, cam or behind the camera. So I'm sorry, I kind of like those pictures. But um, that's my family, Callahan, um, and my two boys, Koi and Cash. Um, those are my why. That's why um, I get up every morning and come to work. But um, it's also the people here that I'll um, talk to you about. Um, so I grew up in the Hereford breed. I remember the first day Angie texted me and I was sitting in the Sonic parking lot as a college student and she's like, will you come into my office sometime? I have a question for you. And like my heart just drops because that's just me all the time. But she's like, and so I went in and she asked if I would work for her and I majored in ag communications, um, but I knew this department had a special place um, in my heart after attending a lot of my events here as a, as a kid. And so I jumped on board. Um, I was a freshman and I just loved this department. Um, I loved exploring any new idea that we could come up with um, in all the events that that took place. So I graduated in 2020. Um, I, it's kind of a hard time to start your career, um, but I ended up freelancing, working for some consulting firms, working with a lot of ag businesses um, and really enjoyed my time doing that. Um, but when I had Koi, I was looking for some opportunities to um, get more on board with um, with a more structured work environment. And I missed um, the the team atmosphere, and that's really what I thrive off of, off of in that mentorship. So um, I ended up coming, joining the team at K-State in November last year. Um, I serve as the recruitment and marketing assistant here. I work a lot with Angie on the communication side, but then a lot on the recruitment side as well. Um, and so you'll see that top picture. Those are our ASI mentors. That is a group that I get to the opportunity um, to advise. And I love just to see that peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, um, the impact these mentors have on the students coming into our department. It's really transformed our experience here. And so that's a a part I really enjoy in getting to work with the students and um, the student workers that Angie and I both get to work with. On the bottom, um, I still am involved in the Hereford breed. My siblings um, continue to show. And so I just feel like that's a really unique opportunity to continue to mentor. As the oldest of um, my siblings, I feel like I've always been a mentor in that way. And so they are a huge part of my life. Um, and so I, I just enjoy that mentorship as well. So that's kind of a little bit about me. <laughs> um, hi guys, my name is Lauren Gates. I'm a junior at K-State. I'm majoring in ag communications and journalism. And then I have minors in leadership studies and marketing. Um, as you can see by my pictures, I'm also a Hereford girl, um, got involved in the Hereford breed from a young age. And so had a really big passion for that. So that's, what's, that's what um, brought me to K-State and um, got me involved not only in the Ag Communications Department, but then as a student worker for Angie. Um, I currently serve on the National Junior Hereford Board um, and continue to be really involved in the Hereford breed and still show cattle here. Um, and I'm also really involved in my sorority, Kappa Kappa Gamma. So I think that's been a big mentorship opportunity for me. It's just being surrounded by a lot of like-minded women. Um, but obviously, I'm a student worker here for Angie, so that's kind of 
I've been very fortunate to know Angie um, just about since I was born. And so being able to come here and get to work with her so closely has been an awesome opportunity for me. Um, I also have a picture of my little sister, just like Emily. I feel like that's one of my um, most proud mentorship roles is getting to have kind of a little shadow growing up and getting to see her grow up. She's a high schooler right now. And so just lots of fun phases of life. Um, and I'm excited to be here today. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm thrilled to have you here. And I love your point about mentoring siblings. I think that's a, you know, really a good point of where it all starts. And and I even think about that as a as a parent, it's kind of a neat opportunity to be able to like think about how you can help encourage either the value of mentorship um, in your kids um, or with the people that they are around every day too. So it starts early, but you know, I guess maybe to get us all on the same page, how do you guys define membership or mentorship? How do you, how do you define that? What comes to mind when you think about what that really looks like in your life? I guess I can start. I think um, for me, a mentorship relationship and just the definition is like-minded individuals um, that it's built upon trust, respect, and open communication lines. And these people are just guidance and support through multiple stages of your life, whether it's now when you're in college or when I was in college, but also as you continue to grow as a professional and then taking those experiences and impacting um, that next generation um, and connecting it through the system, I guess. Yeah, I would definitely echo what Emily said. Um, I feel like mentorship is definitely definitely a collaboration and an opportunity to kind of connect with people that you think are going to be able to benefit you, uh, but also that you can benefit them. Like we said, it's kind of a two-way street. And so I think definitely from a student perspective, uh, mentorships have been so important in helping get me to where I want to go and get me to the place I am today. Um, and it's definitely an opportunity to kind of connect with people and build those relationships that are going to help you be successful. I think they summarized it really well. I mean, to mentoring to me is networking um, and you're never too old to be the protege. I mean, I I still feel like I have lots of mentors out there um, that I learn from and you never, st especially in this industry, you never stop learning. And so that's why I think mentorship is so valuable in the communications industry, livestock publishing industry, um, making those connections and learning from one another up and down um, mentor to protege, protege to mentor, um, I think is so valuable. I, I so agree. I, you guys made me think of that quote that you see, you know, circulating around. I know you've all seen it, but who you spend time with is who you become. Change your life by consciously choosing to surround yourself with people with higher standards. And, um, you know, I do think that's so true, Angie, what you're saying as it ties into specifically communications, because it really is an industry with where who you know matters um, from the standpoint of those are the people that kind of help shape you and mold you too. I think of it that way. I mean, yes, they can get you connections here and there, but maybe, you know, tell us a little bit about why do you think in communications it's so important? I, I would argue it's maybe as important in our industry as any. So I've, you know, one example I have for the value of mentorship is I was lucky enough to be the Boris Basford Student Award winner um, back in 1995. I hate to admit how old I am, but in 95, and I will never forget that week. And, and I was lucky enough to be a winner when Forrest was still with us. And he introduced me to every one of the LPC professionals at least two or three times. I mean, it was, I went home from that event realizing the value of networking and how close and tied our our group is um how tight and and how much you can learn from one another and you know for many many years um i unfortunately i've been able to go to media some of the last few years but that week every year for me has been um such a valuable chance not only to learn and grow as an individual but also that networking and learning from one another and, and like i said you know in the communications field, I'm, I'm lucky that I, I, I will tell you my best friends are past LPC board members with me or or been on the LPC, um, you know, in the LPC industry with me. Those are the ones that I call and I ask questions and I and we talk and we um, help me make life decisions. And so um, I, I, I just believe in our industry, it's so tight knit, no matter if we live 2000 miles apart, um, it's still um, such a great industry to learn and grow from one another in. 
and I don't just back off what you said, like the networking, I always feel like I can go to Angie and be like, okay, I have this idea. Who, who can I connect to? And she always has the resources of, oh, this person is great in the industry and, and they'll just the connections that brings. Um, so that mentorship, I think it just connects you to more people. Um, but also I think what's really valuable in the communication field is of course that second, second eye on all your pieces. And, sometimes telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And that's, I think, super valuable. And it it's just built upon the trust that your relationship has on each other and knowing that, okay, when Angie edits my paper, it's not that she doesn't think I'm a good writer, but she's just wanting to make me better. And I think that's the foundation of a good mentorship. Um, but also, um, yeah, sorry, that's kind of what I had to say, actually, so... <laughs> I think definitely um, as a young professional in the communications industry, it's been really important for me to have mentorships because obviously I have so much to learn um, and there's people that have so much more experience for, than me. And so being able to have someone to like talk through things, I've been writing a story for the Agriculturalist magazine and I spent so much time on it and I finally went to Lisa Mojo and I was like, I just don't even know what to do with this. Mm -hmm. And so having someone that you're able to talk through things with has been really important for me to be able to strengthen my communication skills and feel like I have somebody that can support me and understand like, like, I'm at a roadblock. Where do I go from here? Yeah. And I don't think that changes. Like, I I would argue yeah. that you're going to need that your whole life. Like, and honestly, probably it's harder for me now because when I was your age, I had somebody that it was very easy for me to be like, hey, I'm young. I'm learning. I need to reach out. Now I feel like, well, who wants to sit and talk to me about a story idea? But if somebody gives me five minutes of their time to just help me think out things, that makes my writing come so much easier. So there is there is that value of that. And as you were talking to, it made me think of like what we do, there's definitely a bit of a science, right? Like there's right and wrong of some things we should do, but it's so much of an art to me. And having Angie's perspective and Susan's perspective, and I can just name a hundred people's perspective on my writing, I think like helps you have a fuller experience and, and really, um, helps you have a more artistic, you know, approach to what you do. And I, it's hard to explain that, but I think that's something that not everybody maybe has the same, you know, like we do in communications. So let's talk about a time that you've been impacted by a mentor. Can you guys recall a time that you've had a, a really um, special impact from somebody and how that shaped you? Um. Well, I would definitely, I mean, I have so many examples of so many different mentors, um, but I guess, you know, the one that really jumps to me is Gerilyn, um, giving me that first chance um, interning at Angus. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll never forget that first paper, or my first story I got back from her and all the red marks on it, you know, I... Um, I will admit it sometimes, or I was a naive college student thinking I knew what I was doing and obviously I didn't. And, and just the opportunity to learn and grow from her. Um, I valued the time of her going and doing interviews with her um, on the road. And, and when I had interns at Angus and Hereford and even my students now, I try to, to do that sort of thing with them. I think you can learn so much um, like going on the road and doing a story together and and learning from that experience, taking the photos and and that whole from the beginning to end and just being part of it with them. And so um, I just think what I valued most from Gerilyn is her willingness to help me grow. And she wasn't afraid to tell me what I needed to do and how I could, you know, how the steps I needed to take to get where my goal was to someday be editor of a livestock publication. And so I, I just value Gerilyn um, so much. Um, my computer's about ready to die. We've texted somebody to go get my plug in. So if it goes dead, I'm sorry, but we're um, working on it. So this is bringing yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, yeah, I can go ahead. Um, not to talk about Angie when she's in the room, <laughs> but I definitely think being a college student, um, I've had so many changes within my life. And so coming to college, um, I think Angie has had the biggest impact on my experience here. I don't know how many times I've been like, I don't even know what to do. I don't know what internship to take. I don't know what classes to enroll in. And so having somebody that I can just go sit in their office and maybe have a little bit of a breakdown has been um, just life-changing for me. I think in terms of my success here at K-State, um, 
she's definitely someone that has had a big impact on me and given me so many opportunities. Um, and I think that's a really important part of mentorship is that she's had the trust to give me those opportunities. Um, and then I've been able to grow so much from them. Well, I'm going to echo a lot what Lauren just said. <laughs> so Angie's had a huge impact um, ever since I was in college. She's just provided me so many connections and then ultimately got me back here. I remember when I was looking um, when this job came about, she kept texting me like, are you sure you don't want to apply, Emily? She did. <laughs> um, and so just knowing that she's always had that trust in me, um, that she's always wanted me on her team and believed in me. I can remember when I was running for National Hereford Queen and um, she's like, Emily, we're going to do a practice interview. And I was like, OK. And I was in the midst of college, completely not prepared. And I remember just coming into her office and she's interviewing me and I just started crying. I'm like, Angie, I'm not prepared. And she's like, you've got this, Emily. She walked me through it. And that's, she trusted me and um, first person to hug me when I got it. It's, I think she's just been there um, through it all. And um, I'm really excited to be back on the team and um, the things we get to do together. And so I think it's just, I'm going to, keep saying it's built on trust and respect. And um, I really value that relationship that she's provided me. So. so taking what you guys have experienced from people who have mentored you, how do you think that spurs you along to continue to seek out opportunities to mentor other people? Um, I would definitely say that um, like one of my reasons that I want to give back. So I mentioned that I'm on the National Junior Herford Board. Um, and a really big reason why I decided to pr pursue that opportunity is because there were so many board members that had an impact on me when I was a little girl. And I don't think that I would have been able to be as involved as I am in the Herford breed and have become the person I am today, honestly, because of those experiences. If there wouldn't have been board members that invested in me or were like, hey, Lauren, I know you don't know anyone here, but let's go to this event. And if I didn't go to that event, I probably wouldn't have met the friends that I have now today. And so that's been a really big driver for me for giving back is I wouldn't be the person I am today if someone wouldn't have done that for me. And so I want to be able to do that for someone else and have that same impact because otherwise, how are we going to keep that chain reaction going? And so I think that's definitely a big thing for me is just being able to give back to the opportunities that have really developed me to the person I am today. Yeah, I echo that. And, you know, for me, it, selfishly, as I've, you know, grown up or whatever, to me, being a mentor, I I learn just as much from my proteges as you know they learn from me. Like it, you know, like Emily, for instance, like she has got such an amazing eye for design and um, just great ways of putting things on paper, you know, for our recruitment and for for our department. And so I so value being able to work with her on a daily basis, you know. Um, and learn from her just as much as ho I hope she's learning from me. And so um, I, I think that's why I, you know, I continue to do it is because I learn just, I, I thrive off that. They keep me young. I mean, you know, to be real honest with you, working with the students, working with the young professionals, I think, um, I, and I like learning from them and seeing things from their eyes. You know, obviously when I was in, in Lauren's role here at K-State, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have, you know, social media. And so what she's grown up with and what she does on a daily basis, I've had to learn as a 30, 40 year old, 50 year old, you know, now. And so um, I just think it's so much that learning and networking both ways, that two way street is so important. I'll agree with a lot of things you guys said, and just those people that have provided the opera have mentored me that's really my why but also I think about my kids and developing the next generation of um, the ag industry and I just think it's so important to continue to mentor and why I keep mentoring the students that come in to Weber Hall or my siblings um, or, or kids within the Hereford breed because those kids coming up are going to be mentoring my boy boys someday and I just want that to continue because um, I just think it's so valuable within our industry because of the disconnect to agriculture. And we, we're raising young humans that um, are going to be part of our industry. And I just think that's really important to continue to do. I absolutely agree. The generational transfer of, of, of knowledge and experiences is so important. And um, in an industry that gets further and further away from direct ties, 
through the opportunity to live on a farm or to grow up on a farm, you know, I, I, I think that's so, so valuable. And so I definitely agree there. And, you know, when you have mentors, you just have a bit of a, an extra belief in yourself too, because somebody else is believing in you beyond yourself. And I feel like that gives you a confidence. Um, I, I've seen that in my own kids with people that have invested in them. They have this confidence about them that other kids their age don't have. And I really think it becomes a bit of a gift from people who mentor them and help them see beyond their parents because your parents have to love you, right? Or they're supposed to. <laughs> Mentors don't have to, you don't have, you know, that that's not a given. And so um, I think that's a really good point. Um, you said that beautifully. So, like, oh, it's like having I a cheerleader think, all the time, I think. Right. So I think that's really. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, I guess what are some of those essential pieces of a great mentorship relation? What do you think makes that such a great relationship? Um, I don't know. Talk a little bit about that. What's what are some of those pieces, I guess, that help make it work that people because I think one of the things I'm thinking about here is like this sounds so lovely and you guys do a fabulous job and you've had a great mentor to show you how to do it. But how do we like explain that and share that with other people who maybe haven't had the opportunity to have an Angie in their life or maybe don't have anybody that they're currently mentoring? So what are some things that you could do to like help them put a relationship like that together? I, I think the big thing is don't be scared. I remember this um, fierce young lady that came up to me at National Western Stock Show in Denver in the yards one day when she was, I think, a, I can't remember if she was a sophomore or junior at K-State, or she would have been a junior at K-State, but, um, and just sought me out and started to talk to me about the opportunities at Angus. And, um because of her drive and passion, we hired her as an intern later. And and to be as a mint from my perspective, I will invest as much time in people that that seek me out. You know, like th these two and others that I've been so fortunate to have in my life. Like if if they're hungry for knowledge and they want to learn, and and I can share things with them, I will invest as much time in them as they'll invest in me. Does that make sense? You know, um, I um, I've had so many great people that that touched me and helped me become better and I'm willing to give it to give back. And so I think, I think that's important, you know, from a young perspective and as an even older person is seeking out those people you can learn from and, and reaching out to them. I mean, if, if you reach out and you spend the time, they're going to probably come back and meet you and, and spend that time with you as well. Does that make sense? I think definitely um, being available is an important part of becoming a mentor. I think especially um, in terms of like being at like industry events, I think if, you know, a college kid comes up and asks you a question and you act like you don't have time for it, it's going to be hard to build that connection. And so I feel like a big thing for me is I want to feel respected, even though I probably have, you know, not nearly as much knowledge or information as, you know, a lot of these people that um, I have the opportunity to meet. And so it's definitely important that um, you value not only the mentor, but also the mentee and what they can bring to the relationship. And so I think just being available, um, Angie mentioned, you know, it's a two-way street, um, that it takes, um, time from both people to build a good mentorship relationship, but definitely just being willing, um, to put time in. Obviously it doesn't need to be 50, 50 or 75. There's no specific number, but, um, just being available, I think is super important. I'll agree with, Yeah what they both said. I think um, for me, I think it's really important to be like self-motivated and just, I know um, have a strong work ethic. And um, I think those are two things that we value when we look for students on our team and different things like that, but also just that continuous learning. And I think that comes um, like they were talking about um, just the curiosity of learning within agriculture. Um, and that's what I find really valuable. So. I think that's a good point. And I, I love that you've where you guys are going with this. And I do think like, as I look at the crowd, there are some new names on here. So I'm not really sure like what, you know, how old everybody is or what, what time they're at in their career. But I do think you bring up a very valid point that mentoring, you, you know, like the protege in a sense needs to initiate it to some degree. I, I think, you know, like who, like I, I, that's a question I have a lot. Like, should I be like, handpicking people 
a little bit to like what you do, Angie, you know, should I be doing that more? Should they come to me? I don't know. But I guess if there's any students who are watching this later, I would say I have a network of amazing friends in this industry who would stop what they're doing in a heartbeat if you came up to them and asked them and were brave enough. And so I'm always like, since my kids were little, like, don't be scared go talk, go ask, go seek people out. And I, I hope that you hear that because I do think maybe my perspective of maybe your generation, Lauren, is is there a little, um, it's, it's less of the face-to-face, -face, it's more of through a screen. And that's not a bad thing. But um, like, don't let the screen stop you from like, do it through the screen, whatever it takes, but like find a way to like reach out and connect with people and be brave because I, all these great people I know in a heartbeat, I'm like looking at their faces and names now. I'm like, they would be amazing mentors and they'd be happy to mentor you. And they're so talented. So, you know, and, and I throw that out on myself. Like I'm always open to that, especially when you find somebody who wants to like meet you part way to learn. But I wanted to bring up a question before we, we get done. Cause I know we're getting close on time. And I'm, since I'm not seeing any questions popping up yet, feel free to throw them out there guys. I'd like to ask this one because I think that this is valid and it's also the kind of the hard part. And I didn't want Angie to get off too easy. How do you know when a mentor relationship is not working? Because sometimes they don't work. I remember being a part of things where it's like, we're going to throw this person with this person together. And that happened to me when I was in college, guys. And I will, and it's fine. It doesn't matter. I don't think this person is on here. And, but let me just say it didn't really work because we were just very different personalities. Um, I don't think you can artificially fake a mentor. I just don't think you can just throw people together and it always works. So what do you do when it's not working and how do you know when it's not working and to be more helpful to dissolve it in a sense? Well, th that's hard. And, you know, I, I think you just have to be open. You know, I in an, in an instance where it's just not working, I think you just have to be, I mean, for me, I have to, have to be honest with myself and reach out to that student and say, you know, what can I do to, to meet you? Or, you know, what do you need for me? Or what are you, you know, what were your goals in, in this arrangement? And then if it's not working, we just mutually, um, as much as I hate giving, you know, I'm not really good at giving up. Um, but the best thing probably to do is then to find someone that's more like them and help them create that relationship. You know, um, one thing I wanted to point out before we get off here is like, there's two Herford girls sitting in here and I don't just seek out Herford girls, uh, to be honest with you. But I think what that does show is the like-mindedness, you know, like I connect, uh, you know, when I'm looking for student workers or I, and, and I do, I seek out student workers. I don't just open it up and let, you know, I, I kind of seek the ones I want to apply, but I look for those ones that I know have the same work ethic in the mind that that I have because I, I it's all built on trust and I you know I um can trust the girls to with my working arrangement I get to work from home two days a week and I'm here three days a week and so um I just know based on their past work ethic but that I can count on them and trust on them here and so I just wanted to I know that kind of looks funny a little bit that I kind of tie myself to her for girls but um but that I I'm not just tied to her for girls so even though my I do love her for <laughs> so Do you guys have any, anything you want to add on that if a range is not working? Yeah, I think it just goes back to communication lines. And we yes. talked about about this is like, I think when we bring students on our team now, we just talk about like, this is this is our working arrangement. This is how it works. Um, and just providing that structure and understanding how they work best too. Um, and then, like she said, I mean, it's built on connections and we have, hopefully we have connections that that could benefit them. And um know that knowing that it's not that we are losing respect for them or anything it just might work better for a different um relationship and a different connection i think another big piece of that um is kind of understanding people's communication styles yeah. um i'm a big like take every communication test there is out there and strengths finder and all those things but i think definitely um that's a big part of making your relationship successful is understanding maybe I need all of my stuff put on a list and maybe somebody else wants everything emailed to them and things like that. And so everybody works in different environments. And I think especially my generation has a different work environment than maybe um, some of the older ones. And so I think that's an important part is understanding um, what each other needs in order to be successful. And I think that's really big now. And we talked about this a little bit is like working remote and then some people need to work at a desk, but understanding that 
based on the personality, they can you can work in any environment and you have to respect um, that it's really just getting the job done and um, making sure that we can equip the students or the team the best with the best resources to get get there. So yep, excellent points. So I do have a question from Casey that I wanted to throw out and I kind of laugh because I, I maybe I'm a bit of an extrovert. I can be an introvert in some ways, but I, I might you might guess that I was the extroverted person who came up to Angie at the National <laughs> Western so many years ago. And I didn't think that was strange, but maybe it was. Oh, <laughs> it was great it on your list. Um, but, you know, as a, so I think that it's easy for me to think about initiating conversations and Casey points it out as an extrovert initiating conversations or asking questions feels easier, but there's a lot of content creators where extroversion is a bit, is that a word, is a bit non-normal. Um, so do you have tips for introverts and how they might be able to, to cross that line? Because I can think of a lot of my friends who are introverts, who are fabulous, who have been fabulous mentors to me too, but are maybe not like Angie's extrovertedness. Well, I mean, I guess find the way that's easiest for you to communicate. I would say if you're more introverted and, and going up and finding me at a, a show isn't easy for you or at Ag Media Summit, send me an email, text me, you know, like whatever is your easiest form of communication, um, uh, seek that out or or do it in a group, like have a, a you and a friend come find, you know, like if you're at Ag Media Summit or something like that. Um, I guess just figure out how you feel safest in reaching out. I don't know. That's exactly what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that. Um, I also like to think I'm a little bit more introverted than extroverted sometimes. And I can remember times where I've been at events and I've been so afraid to talk to people and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to be a bother and things like that. And so I think for me, it's always important that I think about how often I have these opportunities, like how often am I, am I in a room where I have the opportunity to connect with so many unique people? And I think that's what really drives me, even though I'm scared and I'm like, oh, I don't even know what I'm going to say with them. I like to think like, what am I going to intro with? What can I find? in common with them and kind of like planning out my conversation and then hopefully it flows from there that always makes me feel a little less nervous about talking to someone um, and I think that's a good way to kind of kick start it is just thinking about the opportunity and thinking about how you can start that connection yeah I um one of my favorite things about being with like the forest bastard program what so plug for that but you know one of my favorite things about that was is you definitely like put you out there where it was like okay you you're gonna go like meet these people and so you just kind of got thrown into it and I think it was like the best gift of my life you know it was so valuable to be able to to have that like excuse to just be bold and brave or to be out there and meet people. And I, I don't think that you have to have that to get that, um, you know, like Ag Media Summit. I, I will say one thing. Can I apologize on behalf of all of us who are just so happy to be with our friends that we don't get to see very often that we kind of like huddle up like a bunch of hens and we're like, J -j -j, you know, so happy to see each other. Please know that come on in like I think that's intimidating and I'll just be honest like where I become introverted is thought of like breaking into one of those groups like I don't want to interrupt your conversation but when you're at an ag media summit or a conference or an event or a show those are great times to like be bold and to try that because you know what we kind of all get it we've all been your age at some time so use that as, a, as an opportunity like Lauren is, is discussing because I think that you know We'd be happy to stop our conversation and it's never more important than the opportunity to meet somebody new. So um, I was just thinking of like, oh, I know I'm guilty of doing that sometimes, but I also know as an older person that I'm like, well, I don't want to go break up your little young huddle and think you might want to meet me. So, you know, don't be afraid of that. Um, gosh, I know we're at our time here. Are there any last comments or thoughts you, that you that you ladies would like to share today with the group? Mm -hmm. Thank you for this opportunity. It makes me feel old, Jen. But I, I just, the big thing is I've been blessed in my life with so many mentors and then and an amazing protégés who I consider my mentors too. Um, and and I am, the networking and the opportunity to learn up and down that line is has helped make me where I am today and why I value mentorship so much. So thank you. Thanks for letting us join. That's all I have to say. <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, I am so glad that you guys joined. It was so, so fun. Sorry, I was trying to take a screenshot. I'm not very good at doing that with like, <laughs> stop things. I don't know if I even did it, but thank you for joining us.
thank you guys for being a part of this. Appreciate your question, Casey. Um, our next one is going to be on April 24th. Uh, stay tuned for the details of that one. We'll be sharing that soon. And all of this is going to be shared as a, a YouTube video as well. So please feel free, you know, like, please share this with people. Um, I hope that we can find ways to like, if you have connections at universities, I think this has been a great conversation and I'd love to be able to get that out. So more young people could, you know, see what you guys have experienced and hopefully get a little desire to have that in their own life if they don't have it already. And I hope it's a good challenge for all of us, um, more seasoned professionals to like, also remember that we play a role in helping um, to bring those connections together as well. So thank you guys for all you do. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday.